let's consider the function f equal xi, which we've shown to be conservative. Okay, it means that uh, if on the positive x-axis, we could go to the negative, but I'll leave that to you. On the, uh, if we move in the positive x-direction, in other words, to the right of the y-axis, then this field is directed to the right because x is positive. xi will be a vector in this direction. And the bigger x is, the bigger the field is. So what do we get? Uh, and, and also, uh, the size of the field is proportional, directly proportional, to how far we are from the axis. Go twice as far from the axis, x gets twice as big, so f gets twice as big. So uh, on the axis, the field is zero. Now, just a little bit to the right of the axis, let's say that this little arrow here represents the field. Okay, if we go twice that far, it means we go to here, it means f would be twice as big. Now, if we go twice this far, that means we would go to, say, here, then the function is going to be twice that big. So we have a function that increases as we move to the right, always directed to the right. And that's going to be true no matter what y is. So we can copy this uh, sequence of vectors to any position we wish. And I could go below the axis also, because y has no effect on the magnitude or direction of this field. OK, now, what happens if we integrate this field around a unit square? Well, let's say that uh, 1 happens to be right here. And it could be any rectangle. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle here and here. So we're going to move around this rectangle in the counterclockwise direction, very similar to the integral that we've already done. We've done this integral. Let's just look in terms of the behavior of this field, why this integral, it gives us 0. Well, you pretty much know. Uh, along here, the field is the same as it is along here, because the field has no y dependence. So if we talk about the a, b, C and D paths, the integral of f dot ds along a is 0 uh, for the same reason that we saw before. Uh, and I said a, I mean b. And that's equal to the integral over d of f dot ds, because f dot ds is 0 on both of those paths. f is in this direction. Delta ds or delta s will be in this direction on the b and uh, in this direction on the d. Of course, f is also 0 on d, so we're going to get 0 there anyway. Um, the integral over a of f dot ds equals the negative of the integral over the c path of f dot ds because f has the same values along a and along c. So f is independent of y. And the integral along c is in the opposite direction to the integral along A. And I can write that over here, conserve a little space. OK, so whatever we get across here, we're integrating over these increasing uh, values of the function. When we integrate across C, we go in the opposite direction, which is going to give us the negative. 
for any x increment down here, we're going to have the same x increment up here, but we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to get the opposite value. Okay, so you should have enough intuition about integration, especially if you're taking multivariable calculus. If not, it might be a little bit of a stretch. Um, but there's your argument. Now, if we go around this path, then we see that um, the function f doesn't circulate around this path. And what do we mean by this? We mean Okay, I thought I'd uh, recorded my explanation here, but the uh, recorder, uh, I turned it off for a second because I was about to cough. Okay, what we mean is uh, by the fact that there's no circulation, of course I've written something here, you can ignore that for the moment. We mean that, for example, if these are forces, then the forces here are going to tend to rotate the square in this direction, whereas the forces up here are going to tend to rotate the square in this direction. The forces here are going to tend to move the square in this direction, but they're not going to tend to rotate it. And of course, there's no force here, so there's no rotation. So uh, by circulation, we can think of that as tendency of a force field to spin the region. Okay, so uh, no circulation okay, implies that there's no curl. And the, if curl is thought of as circulation, okay, no circulation implies no curl. We have no net curl around this square. Uh, and that implies that the integral of del dot f dot ds is zero for reasons that go fairly deep into multivariable calculus, vector calculus, but which you will probably, at least hopefully, see and understand when you uh, get a little further into that course, if you happen to be taking that course. Whether or not you're taking that course, you can understand this idea of circulation, this idea of a vector field. Now, on the other hand, if f equals yi, what does the field look like? Well, it's something like this, except it's in the, uh, well, it's in the x direction, but it gets bigger as you go to bigger y. So uh, if we have small y, we have small vectors. If we have a larger y, we have larger vectors. y being positive, the field is always in the positive direction. And of course, in the middle, we have intermediate vectors. And this isn't drawn real well to scale, but you get the idea. Now, when we get down to the x-axis here, y equals 0. So we have 0 influence on this side. We have 0 vector here. Uh, we go up here or down here, the vectors are still in the i direction, so they create no circulation. So the only circulation that's created is along the top of this rectangle. Okay? So f is 0 on the x axis, no circulation. on the A part. Now, I'm using A, B, C, and D. I don't want to label them uh, just for clutter. Uh, and I'm pretty bad about clutter to start with, so you, you, should, uh, you should encourage me to make such uh, concessions here. OK, so if f is 0 on the x-axis, that means there's 0 circulation on A. There's 0 circulation on B or D, because of the same reasons you have zero circulation here. The vector has no component in the direction of motion along B or along D. The only place it has any uh, influence is along the top of the vector. So you have non-zero negative circulation along the top, zero circulation 
that require else. Again, circulation meaning that this vector field would tend to rotate this square in the counterclockwise or in the, in the clockwise direction, uh, which is uh, the default negative direction for rotation. Okay? So you have circulation. You have non-zero circulation, and the curl is non-zero. The curl of F is not identically zero. It is zero at some points, um, but uh, not, not on the whole. Okay, I'll add one more uh, set of pictures and one more hand-waving explanation to this. Again, if you're taking multivariable calculus, you should, uh, by the end of the course, be able to work out all the implications of what I'm telling you here. But if we have a point here with a vector field that's pointing always directly outward from the point, and one typical uh, case of that would be if this is a positive charge, and you're moving a positive charge in the vicinity of that positive charge. Okay? Uh, and these would represent the forces exerted on the moving charge by the fixed charge. Um, in this case, you have zero rotation. Because, look, if I draw a circle, the uh, component of the F in the direction of motion on the circle is always zero, because the field is always perpendicular to the arc of the circle. Now, if I was to draw a square, that would no longer be the case. But you can convince yourself that uh, uh, if I uh, integrate the line integral along this part of the curve, um, I'm going to have positive influence at some points and negative influence at others. If I go down here, the component of the curl perpendicular to the path is going to go this way, whereas up here it's going to go this way. Um, and, and I'm pointing and not getting my head out of the way. Okay, uh, if I'm up here, if I'm moving around this way, then the component of this field in the direction of motion uh, will tend to rotate the square in this direction, whereas if I'm down here, um, that's not the case. Um, so what am I looking at? Uh, okay, well, if I look over here, I, I'm getting the symmetry wrong. If I look over here, the components of this vector will tend to rotate the square in the opposite direction, and then the same between this quadrant and this quadrant so that we're going to have zero rotation. Uh, there's zero curl to this field. And if you derive that field from the potential function or just derive the field from uh, Coulomb's law that we haven't seen yet, uh, that's what you're going to get. Also, if this is a planet, you have an inward field, OK? And that gives zero rotation which means that if you have a satellite in circular orbit, there's no tendency to mess with that orbit. There's no tendency to rotate that orbit, no tendency to slow or speed up the, uh, the satellite. Okay? Uh, now, I'll say there's lots of divergence at this point. The field diverges from this point. Now, I'm not going to talk about divergence, except that it's del dot f. That's what the divergence is. Um, and it's just a measure of how the field diverges within a region or from a point. Now, if you have a field that acts like this, then uh, clearly if you put a circle uh, through this field or in the vicinity of this field, the field's going to tend to rotate that circle. Okay, So there's lots of curl. And there's no divergence. There's no tendency for this field to move away from this center point. And I think that's about all I'm going to say. Uh, I could say more. Obviously, if you have a square here, uh, the argument I made up here, you're not going to have any point on this square 
where this field is not going to tend to rotate it in this direction, in the same direction in which it would rotate the circle. 